Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Uh, before we get into the next section of the forest, I'm going to take a quick rest to spend some skill points in the Ashina tree. Which is one of the few trees to really offer a number of substantive upgrades. Uh, I generally find the skill trees in Sekiro to be a little bit lackluster outside of, you know, a couple of skills here, a couple there in each tree. But the Ashina uh, upgrade path provides not only a lot of passive utility, it also has at least two moves, which are great. Uh, we picked the first version of Ichimanji up, and then also once we get another... Oh, wait, we could go back and get it now, but I don't feel like going and resting again. So next time we come back to a... Oh, we still have to equip Ichimanji after this. Um, Yeah, once we go back and pick it up, which we have the points for now, we can get an even better version of this, Ichimanji, uh, which has a follow-up to it uh, for the upgrade. But even the base version of Ichimanji is still really good. Hey. Hey, you. <laughs> if you know the path of Buddha, would you slay one who opposes it? One who opposes the Buddha? Correct. <laughs> the one of whom I speak hides in an abandoned temple up ahead. He sealed away the village in a shadowy fog so that he can fool the villagers. An abandoned temple? Yes. It's an old building. <laughs> the door may be closed, but there should be a hole in the second floor. Come. Will you slay he who opposes Buddha? <laughs> the abandoned temple he hides in. Okay, somewhere up ahead. There is an abandoned temple. And there's one dude who really wants us to deal with that. The certain someone holding themselves up in that temple. Just gonna circumnavigate the outside of the forest, though, so we can find a couple of these grapple points, which will lead to a few goodies. Like a light coin purse. We go from one FromSoft staple in the Poison Swamp of Ashina Depths to another in uh, the Hidden Forest. Some misshrouded forest. Something they love doing. Whoop! I think that brings us down to the very bottom where we don't necessarily want to be. Enemies are not too quick to aggro, but there are a lot of them. There is one other handy thing that you can do about this, though. And it's to hit a snap seed, especially when you're surrounded. It's not always apparent when you're surrounded, though, because those ghosts... Uh, they disappear after you get about, you know, a couple of meters away from them. And you'll also lose your lock-on if you get too far away. Uh, so at the very bottom here, there is a headless. Yeah, and this is not a friend that we want to necessarily take on just yet. Uh, there's something that I want to get before we fight a headless. They're, uh, recurring mini-bosses, though. Just like that Shichimen warrior from the cave last time. Is okay, we can leave him at the bottom of the forest for now. There's not too much going on down here. This forest is so much more compact, and it houses way fewer secrets than the one in Bloodborne. And also, just due to, like, the nature of how Sekiro is, the hidden stuff doesn't really set the world on fire. It tends to be more consumable, sometimes some more sen, sometimes some rarer crafting materials. But nothing that feels super vital if you miss. Usually there's only like the two or three things in each larger area that you can miss that feel, you know, like a big deal if you don't find them. And it's usually stuff like gourd seeds or some hidden prayer beads. But for the most part, the good loot is tied to just, you know chipping away at mini-bosses throughout the game. And a... Oop. 
a lot of time what will happen with these enemies is you'll aggro one or two that you can see and then through the veil of the mist uh, you'll get a bunch of ads who just join in and you might not know until it's too late. Audio cues are pretty important for this part. It's one of the few ways you can avoid getting totally ambushed. And this is that abandoned temple, in fact. You hear that? It's not a shamisen, uh, but it is some kind of flute coming from inside. There is no entrance on the ground floor, though. So we have to find another way into the temple to deal with whatever is inside there causing all of this mist to billow in. I'm looking for a good spot to gather these dudes together so the snap seal hit all of them. Oh, and just like that, we're up to five skill points now. This is pretty good. Oh, and shh, you have ghost dogs here, too. Which, because of how fast they are in the limited visibility and the lock-on range because of the mist, uh, the dogs can actually get really problematic here. Especially because you can't dispatch them from a range so easily uh, with shurikens because you don't get that long-range lock-on. So they're usually on top of you before you get a chance to uh, preemptively deal with them. Ah, didn't quite get the range that I needed. Uh, Ichimanji does huge posture damage, especially if you hit that follow-up from the upgrade. We'll get pretty soon. Next time we hit a uh, Sculptor's Idol. Come on. Ah. That's really nice, though. Okay, so it's here that we're gonna come up. And it gives you a better view of things. Uh, it shows you the second floor. And it shows you some light sources dancing on the second floor. Which is your indication that, hey, somehow I need to get up here. You can't get in, you can hug the entire inner wall on the first level, and you can see that there is no way to approach from that angle. So the only option you have left is finding a way to crash through from the second floor of the roof. Which we'll get to, but first, they make this very easy to, easy to see between uh, how much the blue contrasts against everything else in the forest and then the white scratch marks on top of that. And that just acts as a shortcut back to the very beginning of the level. Just need to find a spot where we can grapple up to. This is going to be our path forward. There's a new enemy down here and a mini boss. Let's grapple here. One of these monkey warriors has a gun. Oh, these kick ass! They're so cool! And they are not even my favorite monkey enemies in the game. So that's, by the way, yet another animal to add to our menagerie now. Uh, I'm still working on some kind of grand unified theory, but it's at least worthwhile for now, while we're still, you know, staffing our arc with animals. <laughs> Just to note, what we have encountered so far and what their significance is. How we've encountered them. Oh, these are so good, though. What a good enemy! <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we did get the attention of Tokajiro the Glutton. I don't know if you got to see. You'll see him a little bit better in a minute. We're gonna break aggro, just grapple away. A tiny bit, come right back. Didn't even mean to get his attention while I was dealing with the monkeys. But Tokajiro, the gluttonous, is actually just a renamed Juzo the Drunker, who we fought 
as a mini boss in the Harada Estate. No different at all, except in this case, it's really easy to get a stealth kill off. Uh, and I've heard that the Mist Raven feathers are good for these dudes because you can just teleport behind their really big swings. It is, on I I'm going to be honest, not a prosthetic I use. I think, uh, there's still the wind up to it. All the prosthetics have a pretty long wind up. Okay. We're going to maybe call this a failed experiment. Okay, let's reset that. And fight him normally. Oh, this is a great attack to, for him to use. Doesn't track very well, leaves him so open. This might not be good. The other big difference between uh, this and the Jews of the Drunkard fight is how small the space is that you have to fight this one. But not a lot of ads around aside from the monkeys, which you can deal with ahead of time. Hmm, that's a proper death. I wonder if we are going to see a mechanic I've been with. Nope. Oh, we do see another mechanic, though. I was expecting something else to happen. But Unseen Aid! We finally got Unseen Aid. Uh, that is the percentage chance that you see in your uh, character screen when you go and rest. Uh, that percentage is the chance that you're going to receive Unseen Aid. Unseen Aid from the Gods. Uh, which, just when it procs, which is on death, uh, potentially on death, I should say, it lets you preserve everything you would have otherwise lost. All of your Sen, instead of losing half of it, and all of your current uh, XP. So it's just a nice uh, little less than one in three chance to not lose your shit. And then certain events can alter the percentage of receiving Unseen Aid, or the chances. Something that, like, there are still death mechanics we have yet to see. Uh, there's still quite a bit left to explore of this, just mechanically. Tokajiro has caught on to us, unfortunately, but I think that might be the last... Nope, this is the last monkey. The last monkey samurai. Oh, I fucking salute that good-ass boy. So again, we're gonna do the same thing, except we're not gonna get quite so experimental with the dangerous mini-boss, who I... Mm, I got cocky with. That is the quickest way to die in one of these games, is just to, to get too big for your britches. So now we're just gonna do this straight up. Love this animation. Grab. Honestly, it's kind of nice that they throw the Chained Ogre at you so early in the game. And that the Chained Ogre has such a bad grab animation. Actually, the animation's fine. It's the hitbox on it that sucks. Uh, it's nice that they give that to you early on in the game because it's all uphill from there in terms of, like, the, how bullshit the grabs are. That said, it still does put the fear of God into you for the entire rest of the game. Ah, that's the one he does that always gets me. And that's what he tends to do just to inflict a lot of posture damage. Uh, might still end up having to use a resurrection on this boy. Which would not be ideal, but... Eh, it's not the worst thing in the world. There really is no reason I should be dying, though. Oh, he's coating his blade in poison. I think... Uh, oh, I don't quite recall, but I'm pretty sure Juzo the Drunkard can do the same thing, except with fire. And now every hit that we block against him... We'll slowly build up some poison. Even more so if we actually get hit by his bleed. There it is. As I say, that shouldn't happen. 
but a lot of things happen that shouldn't. Uh, and just like from Juzo the Drunkard, we get another unrefined sake. Uh, last time, I believe we chose to share it with the sculptor. There are a couple of other NPCs who we can also share the sake with. But not before we make this jump down here, cling on to the ledge, and get... Oh, is this another possession balloon? No, it's some pellets. You see how underwhelming that is, though? That, like, the majority of what you find is just some pretty minor crafting material, sometimes something rare, or just, eh, stuff like this, lumps of wax. Fatty wax form inside the body in rare circumstances. Used for higher occultic upgrades. Considered omens of disease, they are known to grow larger as the illness worsens. That's going to become a more common thing that we start finding, is lumps of wax. And we can finally get ourselves up here. And from this branch, we can get up to the second floor of the temple. And to the thatched roof. Huh. Surprised there's no item. That's fine, we can drop down to the second floor now. And somewhere around here... There's a hole leading to the inner rafters. Look at this boy! Look at this slug monster from Bloodborne. Uh, the Miss Noble is the most pathetic mini boss in the game, but it, this happens when you kill him. Uh, plus, you get a mm, lump of grave wax, long suffering illness. We'll see the growth turn larger and blacker still. It's customary to run water over the site of an extracted growth. Keep this mist in mind, by the way, and just the way it functions. Oh, and a better version of the damage upgrade, Sugar. So the Mist Noble is playing a song that brings the mist and seems to trap souls in the forest and damns them to water aimlessly and endlessly. By killing him, we stop the song and get rid of the mist. No more mist means no more ghosts in this area anymore. It also opens the way forward towards whatever the Miss Noble was trying to protect uh, from us. Or from intruders. And beyond is Mibu Village. So this is actually where some of those balloons are going to come in. Like there's the Mibu Possession Balloon, or Mibu Possession Balloon, which talks about being blessed with fountainhead water and it expresses mourning for the dead. Uh, the dead get... Red and white pinwheels, which is important to keep in mind as offerings. Uh, there's the wealth balloon, which says that Mibu actually means life born in water. And it tells us how the Ashina clan worships the fountainhead water that the Mibu use in these balloons. They think it to be sacred. And then I think one balloon references two different characters we will meet later. Uh, one being Badger and the other is Tenkichi. And all this ties into the next area, of course. Also, remember, the one guy said that the Miss Noble opposes the Buddha. And they're even holed up in that abandoned temple, which seems like it should be an act of desecration. Here is that follow-up. Yeah. Oh, the double HMG is so good. <laughs> Alright, that's gonna do it for now. Uh, oh, let's talk to the Memorial mob first, actually. Care to purchase an offering? Another one. Where you find the departed, you'll find the memorial mob. Even those who can't die still have use for offerings. Mm. Go ahead. Buy an offering. <laughs> What do y'all even have? Oh, you have the purple gourd. Uh, honestly, nothing that's... Mm, nothing that I want urgently. So we'll be back. Uh, thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.